Imagine, if you will, two mad scientists scheming in their laboratory. One of them says, I have an idea. We should create a 350-foot-tall reptile that can fire plasma beams from its mouth. To which the other scientist responds, That sounds rad as hell. Let's do it. They unleash their creation upon an unsuspecting metropolis and watch with glee as it lays waste to the urban landscape, leaving civilians to pick up the pieces. That's my analogy for AI. Just replace the mad scientists with out-of-touch tech engineers and Godzilla with complex algorithms. I'll be putting AI in quotations because it's not sentient intelligence like the kind you see in sci-fi films, it's pattern recognition. AI is just a marketing buzzword used by companies to make it sound cooler than it actually is. I mentioned AI briefly in a rant video from last year, but I was hesitant to make an entire video on the topic since I felt I didn't have much to say that went beyond the same talking points that have been regurgitated by every other art commentary channel out there. But there's been several new developments since then that I think will make this video at least a little less generic and more interesting to listen to. Also, I feel like if I don't compile all my thoughts on the matter into video format, I'm going to lose my mind. With all that said, I do recommend checking out Jimmy McGee's video, The AI Revolution is Rotten to the Core, as he explains the technology behind it more eloquently and in more detail than I ever could. Modern AI technology has been publicly available as far back as 2014 or so, but it's seen a lot of advancement since early 2022. And over this past year, companies have been annoyingly inserting it into every product imaginable. For what reason I would ever need to talk to my refrigerator, I have no idea. But I'm assuming that, in light of the worldwide loneliness epidemic and subsequent rise in mental illness, the end goal is to just have us socialize with our furniture. Can't wait until I can vent to my microwave about how my day went. I don't know about you, but I for one am very tired of Silicon Valley techies who feel the need to reinvent the subway and vending machines every few years, getting to make all of the big decisions as to how our modern society functions. And I have an open disdain towards most, if not all of the crap they come up with. And yes, I say that as the owner of a smartphone. I use one because I have to for the sake of my online presence, and because I never learned how to use physical maps. Not because I want to. But first, for the sake of objectivity and fairness, let's go over the potential pros of AI. Streamlined workflows. I can see writers using AI for things like research and rough drafts, and say if your job involves a lot of numbers, AI could speed things up a lot. Iteration is admittedly something it does quite well, which could make it useful for concept artists, though this of course is a double-edged sword since that also means it poses more of a threat of replacing them. I can see it being used in hospitals for diagnostic testing and imaging, that sort of thing, but that kind of use would need to undergo some really heavy quality control since, you know, people's lives are at risk, so I'm gonna put that one down as a maybe. I do think AI provides low-cost and easily accessible talk therapy. It of course shouldn't be a replacement for real human connection, but let's be real, some people have literally no one to talk to, in which case a supportive voice on your phone is going to be better than nothing. Uh, I can also have Meta AI write a screenplay and insert Sonic the Hedgehog into the Last of Us universe, then have him be put down by Joel after he gets infected with the Cordyceps virus, so that's pretty neat. And that's about all I can think of. Now let's take a look at all of the cons. Disinformation, unemployment, plagiarism and or exploitation, hyper-competitive schooling, fraudulent activity, breaches of privacy, deepfake pornography, unlawful surveillance, human error, over-reliance, interpersonal dependency, false accusations, oversaturated markets. This one could apply to a variety of things, but I've been seeing a concerning trend here on YouTube that highlights it. A few months ago, I made a video essay on Beyond Journey's End, and I watched it myself a few times, as I do all my videos, so naturally I start getting recommended other Freerun-related videos, one of which was this. 
Intrigued by the awkward wording of the title, I click on it, and the script is very generic, but even more notable is how the person narrating keeps mispronouncing words. And then I realize, it's an AI-generated voice reading what is likely an AI-generated script. I wouldn't be surprised if the thumbnail was AI-generated too. YouTube already had the problem of being oversaturated with garbage, but now, thanks to AI, content farms can churn out that garbage even quicker. I can't use Google Images at all anymore without getting AI in the search results. What's that? You want a real image of a real dog chasing a real ball? Well fuck you, here's some AI generated sh**. Sure, I can specifically filter out AI when searching things, but I wouldn't have to do that if it were regulated at all. And not every source is going to be upfront with whether or not images were made with AI, which means I can't filter all of it. Believe it or not, I'm not entirely against AI. Like any new technology, it's a tool, which means it can either be used responsibly or abused for profit at the expense of others. To give an example of a responsible use of AI, about a year ago, Austin McConnell released an hour-long animation to promote his new book, and he used several AI tools in order to make it. However, he then followed it up with another video explaining his process of putting it together. He explains that most of the artwork shown in the animation was art he either made himself or commissioned from other artists. He also made the animations using assets found for free in the public domain or that he himself already purchased. I paid for access to Adobe Firefly, whose neural filter plugins, brushes, and generative fill tools are all accomplished through licensed means. Even the diffusion models used for reference in many character illustrations were trained using 3D characters that I paid a license for. I have legal permission to remix and reuse these royalty-free elements using whatever creative or technical methods I wish. <laughs> That's why they're called royalty-free. Granted. I I don't think he should have been surprised by the backlash, seeing as he neglected to explain all this before releasing the video in question, at a time when the discussion surrounding AI in the creative space was at its peak, but McConnell's video is what I would call an ethical use of AI. The only part of his response video I disagree with is where he claims that some of the backlash was simply a result of people gatekeeping art. Or like, dictates the terms in which creativity ought to be explored. Because I feel like history has shown that gatekeeping art and stifling new technology never works out too well. Which comes off as disingenuous to me, since the scope of AI goes far beyond simply making it easier for people to put together their own passion projects. And as I highlighted earlier, the downsides of AI still heavily outweigh the benefits. Moving on to the unethical side of things, if you're a user of Adobe products, as a lot of artists are, I have some news for you. Last month, Adobe made some changes to its terms of use, stating that they have the right to access anything made using their products through automated means. The concern being that this simply translates to they're going to use all of their customers' projects to train their AI models. After receiving backlash, they clarified the wording of their terms of use to instead say, we will not use your local or cloud content to train generative AI models, except for content you choose to submit to the Adobe Stock Marketplace. Yeah, okay, try telling that to Brian Kissinger, one of several artists who have found AI imagery up for sale on Adobe's Marketplace that were clearly scraped from their artwork without consent or compensation. But don't worry guys, Adobe products are totally, definitely not spyware. Because they said so. In addition, Adobe was also recently sued by the Federal Trade Commission of America over their hidden fees and for making it unreasonably difficult to cancel subscriptions. I don't know all the details of that controversy, but take from that what you will. The point I'm getting at is that Adobe's business practices are scummy, and they deserve to die out. I stopped using Photoshop a while ago due to the subscription fees, and if you're still using it, I recommend doing yourself a favor and downloading Clip Studio instead. 
It's constantly going on sale, and the basic version has no monthly fees. Buy it once, it's yours forever. I also find it to be more intuitive and artist-friendly than Photoshop anyways. As amusing as it is that AI still can't seem to figure out how many digits belong on a human hand, the reality is that it's been progressing very rapidly, because there are now engines trained on the entirety of ArtStation, Instagram, Pinterest, take your pick. If it exists on the internet, AI has probably gotten its greasy hands all over it. And it's already reached the point where even I have to look closely to tell human-made art apart from AI junk. The problem with this is that most consumers won't care enough to learn how to spot those differences. And at the speed it's progressing, it's hard to say what AI will look like 10 months from now, let alone 10 years. By now, you've probably heard of Instagram making it impossible to opt out of AI data scraping depending on your geographical location. Funny enough, Meta's very own AI chatbot fully admitted to me that doing so could be considered a violation of user rights. This has caused a lot of artists to migrate to the new anti-AI platform Kara. Perhaps you're one of them. The app is currently being funded out of pocket by its creator, Gina Zhang, and she's turned to crowdfunding in order to keep it going. While it's not the best place for visibility as it's catered specifically to artists, it is a good place to showcase a portfolio and network with like-minded people, and I'm hoping it survives its early stages of development. Supposedly, anything generated with AI can't be copyrighted, but laws are known to change, and where there's large amounts of money to be had, there's loopholes. Which is why I recommend protecting any public images of your work using either glaze or nightshade, assuming you're not doing so already. I don't know exactly how efficient they are, but it'll at least give you some peace of mind. Artistic fields were already highly competitive and difficult to break into, and they're only going to get more competitive as the pool of options becomes smaller. I can see studios keeping their animation and VFX veterans while offloading the rest of the work to AI depending on how advanced it gets, meaning credits for productions could get a lot shorter. At the start of this year, Cartoon Brew conducted a survey among animation and VFX companies that have begun implementing AI tech. Of those respondents, 44% say they're using AI to assist with 3D modeling, followed by character and environment design at 39%, and voice generation and compositing coming in third place at 37%. At the bottom we have lighting and texturing at 25%, which is surprising considering that 3D modeling is currently the most popular use of AI among studios but I suppose texturing requires a lot more precision than creating base models. It may be of little comfort, but only 33% of survey takers expect 3D modeling jobs to be affected within the next three years, and as little as 15% predict that AI will displace animators, illustrators, and texture artists, so that's not too bad, right? There are some art directors out there who are still vehemently against the use of AI, but it's hard to say how long that will last as the technology becomes more normalized. I've heard people say that AI is not all that different from the NFT craze, and that it'll probably die out over the next few years, but unlike NFTs, AI is actually profitable, which is why I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. I'm not mad at the people generating anime portraits of themselves for fun, because they likely don't know any better and see it as nothing more than harmless entertainment. I also can't blame creatives for taking advantage of it so long as they're doing so in an ethical way. My anger is towards the people who selfishly unleashed AI upon the world with zero consideration as to what the consequences would be, as well as the companies funding AI because they want to benefit from it. I'm passionate about drawing and character design. It's why I started this channel. Which is why it saddens me to think that there's now a younger generation that may feel discouraged from learning how to draw at all in light of advancements in AI. Because why should I learn a skill if AI can do it better than me? Which, first of all, that's an unfair comparison, seeing as AI has way too much material to work with. And secondly, 
AI is, by its nature, formulaic, meaning it could do a lot of heavy lifting in creating the next Fast and Furious film, or the 42nd installment of Call of Duty, but it'll have a much harder time encapsulating the success of Fight Club, Earthbound, Dark Side of the Moon, etc. Human-made art is the product of our own preferences and lived experiences, and even the mistakes found within it will be specific to the individual. Not everything in art is quantifiable, no matter how badly Silicon Valley wants us to think otherwise. Maybe you decide to utilize AI tools in order to make that project you've always wanted to. You are in your right to do so, but you should be putting a lot of thought into what you're using it for and why. Full transparency here, I've used an AI tool before to convert photos into manga-style backgrounds, since I find it to be similar to some filters found in Clip Studio, it just does a better job. I don't like AI, and I think we'd be better off without it, but I might as well make use of it now that it's out there. I may end up using AI for really specific things, but anything more than that would actually limit what I'm able to create. AI is only as good as the people using it. Without an understanding of, say, drawing fundamentals, all of which I've compiled into a half-hour playlist, just saying, you're not going to be able to make good creative decisions. And that's what a lot of art is, decision-making. By letting a machine make most of those decisions for you, you're robbing yourself of your own creative control and expression. I'll put it like this. If less than half of an art piece was AI-assisted, it can still be considered art. If most or all of something is generated with AI, it is no longer art, because not enough human input and problem-solving went into the making of it. It is possible that with the efforts of advocacy groups fighting for artists' and workers' rights, AI will be delegated to the more tedious aspects of jobs as new laws are made to regulate it. I'll never stop drawing because I enjoy it and it gives me a sense of purpose and satisfaction, whether I get paid for it or not. And there will always be people and studios out there looking for original work. After all, would you rather have the original Mona Lisa hanging on your wall, or a JPEG of it printed onto a canvas at Walmart? Thanks for watching, and go touch some grass, why don't ya? Just put down the phone for a bit and go do some human being stuff.